September the 20th, 2010, I brought my son to the doctor to see what was wrong with him. We thought he had sinus. The doctor told us, get him to St. Luke's emergency room immediately. Don't stop at the store. Don't stop anywhere. Get him there as soon as possible. The doctor came out and told us, um, he said, I have to be honest with you. He said, your son is dying. Your son has less than a 10% chance of living and we need to do this procedure and we need to do it right away. If we don't do it right away, he'll be dead within 24 hours. Hearing that, it, it pretty much floored me because like I said, we brought him in basically for sinus and here the doctor's telling me, your son is having heart failure. He uh, has a blood clot in his heart. His liver is shutting down. His kidneys are shutting down. He has fluid on his lungs and it doesn't look good. Now, the doctor told me this once the procedure was over, once they had implanted the tandem pump. He told us that um, he almost didn't make it. He said his heart stopped on the table before they actually opened him up. His heart stopped. So they had to get his heart going again. November 2nd, 2011, uh, my dad was complaining of, of chest pains. Um, we called the paramedics and they came out and they ran tests on him. They were saying that nothing looked really abnormal, but they would like to bring him in for observation anyway. And he didn't want to go. And so after about, after them staying about an extra like 15, 20 minutes trying to persuade him to just to go, they had to leave. And so my mom and I um, still sat in there and tried to um, persuade him to go, like let us, you know, take him. If he didn't want to ride the ambulance, we could take him. And I remember him saying, no, I'm fine, I feel better already, I just need to lie down. So I walked in the kitchen to grab um, something to drink, to grab some water, and I heard my mom yell in a way that I'd never heard her before, and I knew that something was wrong. I ran back into the bedroom where he was, he was lying in bed, he was lying in bed, and uh, I, I saw that he was, um, he was slumped over to the side and his eyes had rolled in the back of his head. You know, the only husband she's ever had uh, was was in the middle of a heart attack, and so she, so I grabbed the phone. I called uh, I called a 911, and um, they they told me that they were sending the, the same paramedics back. That they're just basically ma making a U-turn because they hadn't been gone very long. And then the um, over the phone, they, they told me that I, we needed to get him on the ground. So my mom and I somehow picked him up and got him on the ground. And then the paramedic told me, or, or, or no, sorry, the EMT dispatcher told me that uh, he was now going to walk me through uh, CPR. And I told him, I was like, I already know CPR, I'm certified in it, here's my mom. <laughs> so I passed the phone off to my mom and I just started, um, I started performing CPR on him. Uh, I learned CPR uh, probably over, over 15 years ago, probably when I was in Boy Scouts. But uh, I'm really glad that I did learn. And I don't know if I did it perfectly or not because it had been so long, but um, I would definitely suggest that everyone learn. Uh, I gave him chest compressions for about four or five minutes um, until the paramedics got there. I remember one thing my dad always taught me was in a situation like that was to never panic because when you panic, you lose all control of the situation. So. I didn't panic when that was happening. Now, the minute the paramedics took over, uh, that's a different story. But when I was, you know, performing the CPR on them, I, I did what I had to do. All the while, I still had my uh, my LVAD in, and I didn't think it was that big of a deal. You know, but uh, I was told that not a lot of people are able to have enough heart function with an LVAD in to still perform CPR on somebody else. Yes, I did. I learned CPR in Boy Scouts, and I did have a very stern scoutmaster who was harder on me than every other Boy Scout, and that's because my scoutmaster was my father. So he was the one that 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 took us to, to the courses and everything to make sure that we learned CPR. And that's the only that's the only time I've ever performed CPR, and it happened to be on my father. He's also thanked me several times for having performance. I've, I've, I've thanked him several times for having you know. Uh, taught me or, or being persistent about me learning it and then he was thankful for me using it. I had the opportunity to go back and thank the paramedics for coming out and did, doing what they did. Um, the paramedics that came out told me, one of the paramedics told me, said, Mr. Benoit, I appreciate you thanking me for what I did, 
But if your son didn't do what he did, there was nothing we could do for you when we got there. So my son kept me alive until the paramedics got there and the paramedics did what they had to do. And I want to say that I'm so proud of my son, uh, not only because he saved my life. I mean, how many, how many sons saved their father's life, especially in the condition he was in? To, to step, to not hesitate, but to jump right in and do it and do it correctly, and to remember what he was taught in Boy Scouting. You know, I'm so proud of him, not only for that, but the way he handled his whole situation. He's a young man, he's 26 years old. And for him to have an LVAD or have heart failure at 26, very difficult, not only physically, but mentally. And for him to, to get through this the way he did is, is to me, he, he's my hero. He's my hero, he's, he's, he's special. I don't, know if, I don't know if I could have handled, my heart attack was a little different from his. I went flatline, but his was a, a long progress to get back to where he is now and he did all the correct things. He took his medicine, he went to his doctor's appointment, he um, took care of his wounds and everything. He did everything perfectly. And I just wanna say thank you for, um, for doing all that you did, man. I appreciate you. Oh, I love you. You don't have to thank me. You, you do it too. I love you, man. This is gonna be a, a, a big Father's Day because both of us shouldn't have made it to this Father's Day. It could easily be a Father's Day where I haven't got a father, and it could be easily a Father's Day for him where he doesn't have a son. And so both of us are here for it, so we're really thankful for it, and then we're just gonna we're just going to uh, enjoy the fact that we're both here for it. Mm -hmm.